Hello again. This is Dylan Bowman with Iron Farm. And I'm Megan Hicks of Iron Far. This is our fourth and, and final interview here on, on Thursday here at SFRC. We're here with Ida Nielsen. Uh, Ida, welcome to California. How are you? Thank you very much. Um, I'm well. Good. Good. You are Swedish, but you are not unfamiliar with the U.S. You went to university here. Uh, yes, in uh, Flagstaff, Arizona. Yeah. Right. Um, we want to talk to you about your history uh, with collegiate running before getting into ultra running. But before that, let's talk a little bit about your season. You've had quite a year. There was some high highs and a bit of a low low this fall. Uh, we saw you win Transvolcania this spring, which was a, a heck of a blast off to 2016. Yes, it was a great start and uh, I got a really great introduction to sky running and uh, I love the race all of that, so yeah. It was a... You kind of spent your summer sky running, right? Yes, I did a little bit of everything. I've done uh, a few road races also, but uh, mostly running in the mountains. Um, I mean, this is a sort of a whole new thing for you, running these technical courses up high in the mountains. What has 2016 that experience been like for you? It's been really fun. I, I've tried some um, more extreme races that I can't really handle yet, like uh, the Dolomites <laughs> and uh, so, uh, and then some easier ones like Transvulcania was nice. It, it's uh, still some technical parts in the downhill, but uh, for, for me it's uh, races I can handle, but uh, it's good to practice uh, and always get better. Both like uh, to be fast in the uphill and then uh, go down fast also. We last saw you race in September when you re ran and won the Rut 50k, but I think that day wasn't the best one for you. You might have started feeling an injury that day. I felt uh, great during the race okay. actually. It was uh, the day after or right after the race. I started to feel some pain in the leg and I thought maybe I missed a bit sore after the race and. Um, yeah, I took some days off and then I get, got a lot of different treatments, but nothing really ha helped. So mm -hmm. I thought I would have time. I had three weeks to do Ultra to, to get healthy again, but uh, it just got worse and worse. So actually, I had two months with no running. And, okay. uh, yeah. And ultimately, did they figure out what your injury was, or...? Yes, not completely. Like, I had my guesses, and some people had some guesses, and uh, <laughs> I, it was, uh, I think, more uh, muscles and nerves, and uh, it wasn't anything in the bone, at least, so mm -hmm. I was happy about that, but huh. um, it was hard to figure out, and uh, I did a lot of small, different stuff that helped, and also, yes, the rest, and uh, it got well again. Just keeping you off it a little yes. bit. Cool. Well, rewinding, we already mentioned that you went to Northern Arizona University. It looked like you had a quite successful college career. You were a two-time NCAA champion, right? Yes, that's yeah. right. And what were your events? What was your strength? I did the steeplechase and the, the 5K was my main thing. Yeah. Great. And I saw also that you dealt with a pretty serious injury sort of after your, your college career. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It seems like it kind of took you out of the sport for a few years. Yes, it did. Like when I finished college, I, I wanted to to really go for running, and I moved back to Sweden. And uh, but the problems all started, and I got a lot of injuries, and I coming back all the time. But then uh, finally, I got a serious hip injury, and then I felt like I had to completely stop and. It took uh, four or five years for me with, mm. wow. uh, until it healed up. So. And so then you came back in about 2013, started racing again, and is that kind of when you picked up ski mountaineering as well? No, yeah, actually it was the last, last summer was my first summer oh. really racing again. So, yeah. And ski mountaineering was also, I started uh, three years ago, uh, I moved up north in Sweden and then I like, I love to have the snow and the mountains, mm -hmm. so I started to do that and uh, a bit more cross-country skiing. Um, but it was actually, yeah, last winter when I moved to Chamonix and 
during the World Cup. Mm -hmm. I really learned the sport, and uh, yeah. And is it true that Emily Forsberg kind of motivated you to, to try uh, ski mountaineering and and kind of encourage you to participate in, in the racing scene in the European circuit? Yeah, like not that in the first place. I it was uh, I was just in the place and uh, I started trying it on, and uh, I did a few small races in Sweden. But then she helped me a lot uh, last winter when I moved to Chamonix and uh, yeah, just really patient and great to, to have someone to learn from yeah. and uh, it's one of the best too. Yes. You've come to San Francisco before as a tourist or as a visitor during your time in Northern Arizona University. Is that how you ended up here before? Yes, I've been here uh, once just visiting, like I was doing a race in Stanford and then I went to uh, just uh, I have seen a few things like Chinatown, and uh, I think I went to this dwarf. Uh, <laughs> but I've never seen this area where the race is. So I uh, just driving over here today. It looks beautiful in the distance, all mm -hmm. the, the hills and mountains. So yeah, it looks great. What has um, what's brought you to target the North Face Fifty? Is as I don't know if this is your season wrap up or if this is going to be you kicking off a new year, but. Um, how'd this get on your hit list? Um, yeah, I really felt like now when uh, I couldn't do the Ultra Pyrenees and I, I had no really finish for my season, so um, I would like to do one more race and so this will be my uh, final running okay. race and then for a few months I will just focus on uh, ski mountaineering and then start to run again in the spring. Cool, and as Megan mentioned, you've had a really successful running season this year. You won Trans Volcania, which is kind of the equivalent of the North Face 50 Mile Championship in, Euro in Europe. You also won uh, the Mont Blanc Marathon and the Rut 50K, all by rather large margins. Does that give you a lot of confidence going into this race? Are you comfortable now with, with races of this distance, about 80 kilometers? I wouldn't say comfortable because still I have yet <laughs> done like uh, Transvulcania like, mm -hmm. and uh, one uh, race last year, Ultra Vasan, mm -hmm. that is actually oh, right. this distance. Yeah. So it, it's still uh, new for me and especially now when I haven't been running so much. Mm -hmm. Like I started to feel comfortable in the longer distances more this summer. And, uh, but um, I, I feel more comfortable now after three good weeks of training with both skiing and running. So I feel more fit than I was uh, a month ago. I felt very unfit and <laughs> I wouldn't be comfortable <laughs> running this. So, so we will see how it goes. Like It's been quite um, rushed training now. I like, trained a lot for three weeks. So we'll yeah. see if it's... Um, how it's going to be. <laughs> Good. And, and obviously this is kind of like the end of the season party here, at least on the, the North American Ultra Circuit. It's one of the most competitive races of the year. You probably haven't raced a lot of the women that are going to be at the front of the pack on Saturday. Are you familiar with any of the other runners? Um, do you look at the start list at all? Um, are you going to be keying off anybody in the race? No, I don't know too many of the other women. I mean, I've met Megan a few times, mm -hmm. and I know, uh, of course, she's going to be very strong, and uh, it's a lot of other strong women. But uh, since I'm quite new, I, I'm getting to know more and more people all the time. Mm -hmm. Every race is very nice. I, I get more friends and get to know more <laughs> yeah. people, so it's good. So I don't know if I've seen you race enough to sort of, um, like, see your style um, but when I've watched you race you've kind of gone off the front and I don't know if that's because you just have more like raw leg speed than the rest of the field or if your style is to to go out hard and you know push it early like are you have you thought about strategy for this weekend I think uh, this race will be nice because I think it's actually possible to run more in the pack if you want to because I feel like some of the sky races it's not really possible to, to run that even mm. because even people have like they're good in the uphill or downhill and it's never like you really run in a pack like you do in a road race uh -huh. or on the track so sometimes I can miss this feeling and uh -huh. I think actually this is a kind of race where you would be able to run a little bit more together so um, it could be nice maybe uh, that we can keep together in the beginning and uh, it's, it's a long race to just go by yourself. 
That's interesting you said that because Megan and I were talking about that yesterday and that a lot of times at this race, the men's race is very pack oriented, um, where you might see five, seven, ten guys together early, maybe through halfway. And we haven't ever seen that in the women's field. So it'd be interesting. I think we have the depth and the, the sort of level of competition that, to see that potentially this year, which I think would be really cool and exciting. You're a Solomon runner, and from among your team, we have multiple previous champions of the North Face 50. Um, in the girls, we have Emily Forsberg and Anna Frost. Have, have the girls given you information on what to expect and, and what it's going to be like out there? Yeah, of course I talked to Emily now because we just spent three weeks together training. So Ski, she, ski training or ski, ski and run? It's, I have been running also. She okay. joined me for some runs okay. and we actually did a small race together also okay. in France. But um, yeah, mostly skiing and then I tried to like uh, do this afternoon runs. Uh, just been on the road up mm -hmm. and down, but uh, I mean good. And, but she, talk, she, she thinks it's like, oh, this suit you so well because it's not technical at all. <laughs> 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 and like, yeah, we'll see, but I'll, I think I will enjoy the course. I like when it's running the whole time mm -hmm. for me. That's the best when you don't have to hide too much. <laughs> the girl wants to run, just let her <laughs> run, okay? <laughs> and so you said you've already sort of started training for the upcoming ski mountaineering season. Do you think that uh, as soon as you finish the race, you know, this weekend, that you'll jump straight into ski mountaineering season? Will you take a little bit of, of downtime uh, prior to racing? I will, uh, of course, I need an easy week mm -hmm. after, but um, then I will. Uh, ski again a lot and uh, yeah, prepare and, um, for the World Cup and I will see, I mean I have to recover until uh, my body feels fresh again but I think it's good like when to start with something new when it's more easy for the body in mm -hmm. some ways mm -hmm. to, to not have the pounding so that sure. will be good. Well good luck on Saturday, it's great to have you here, I think you'll really enjoy the course and the trails here in the Bay Area and uh, best of luck. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Good luck, Ida. Thanks. <laughs>